Hello. In this first section, we are going to go over some of the basics of utilizing Google Slides, in particular, um, setting it up to create um, a digital interactive notebook. We want to make sure that we know where all the features are so that when we start getting creative, we know where to find the things that we need. The first thing we want to be able to do is to be able to change the page size or shape of our Google slide. And it's quite easy. We're going to go under the file tab. And underneath down towards the bottom, you will see page setup. It will automatically be set to widescreen 169 as this is the standard size for most slide presentations today. But we want to click on that and change it to custom. Now here is where you need to decide what shape, size, orientation of a document you want. If you want a traditional or, um, notebook that's just single pages, that's easy to print, I recognize, recommend going uh, with an eight and a half by 11. Um, but if you want something a little wider, you can go 11 by eight and a half. Those, both those sizes obviously make it very easy for you to print the pages if you ever need to. Or you can actually leave it at this size and um, create double pages, um, more like a traditional interactive notebook for your students, where teacher notes are on one side and student practice is on the other side. So let's have a quick look and see. So we've set this to custom and we are going to make this 11 by 8.5. And you will see that it has automatically stretched it to a um, horizontal uh, image. We can change this again. We can go to page setup, um, 8.5 by 11. Makes it look like a regular uh, page. Um, and so this is entirely up to you. Um, if we go back to the original, so go to page setup and go back to that widescreen 16.9, it'll go back to the original page. And this is where you would start building. So I'm just going to delete this bit out for myself here. And I can grab the ruler and draw a line, pull a line out into the middle and you see it's gone red. So that gives me a marker so that I know where the center of the page is. Now, if I'm going with this size, I can add shapes. Um, so I click on that circle and square overlapping and different options open up. And let's take the rectangle there. I can make double sided pages this way. So I am going to make a copy. So I've right clicked on my mouse to get the copy. And then I click on the page and I right click again. Again, you can use control V and I can make a duplicate. And so I can therefore make two side by side pages if I wanted to. Um, we are for simplicity purposes going to st stick with this. But again, you can make it an eight and a half by 11, 11 by eight and a half. You can make it square if you wanted to any shape that you really, really wish to. Um, I do want to show you a few tools as well. So when you click on a shape and you want to make sure that it is centered, single click on that shape and then right click. And again, those tools all appear and you can change the order. Um, um, front to back on the page. You can rotate things very easily there and you can center on the page. So center horizontally and you can see it's gone to the middle. I'm going to undo. So that's control Z to, um, quick keys on your computer. And, or, and then I can go center page vertically to make sure that it is centered that way. And you see it just shifted up ever so slightly. Um, now that I've got that one item inch, that one square inch in the right spot. If I single click on this second square, just single click on it, and then I'm pressing and holding on my mouse and I'm sliding up. And you'll see that that red bar has appeared. So it's telling me that that item is now um, centered around that line. If I move it, it's now centered to the center line. And there we go, we can go back. And so this helps us with centering our pages. 
The other thing that we want to learn how to do is insert a background. When nothing is clicked on the page, if we go to the background button at the top, and you can see that toolbar changes depending on what we're doing at the time. By clicking on the background button, I can add just a plain color. And you can see I'm done and that turquoise has gone in the background. Um, I can go to gradient and choose gradients. There's preset ones, or I can click on the plus and create a gradient. Um, you can do that with the color as well. So if you click on the solid, you click on the plus and the color pops up. So if you want a very specific color, you can type in the hex code if you wish, or you can just drag this around to find what you want. I'm just gonna click cancel because we're gonna leave that at the turquoise and click done if we wanna leave it that way. The other really, really thing, cool thing is that you can select an image. So by cl clicking on that choose image button, this box will open up. Um, we can upload an item from our computer. Um, we can click the browse button and the window from our computer will pop open and so we can search our files or you can literally drag and drop an item from uh, your computer on there. If you click on the camera, you can take a photograph with your computer. Um, by URL is a very cool tool so that you can just in, um, paste in the URL of a specific image. Um, you can search your photos. Um, these are some old photos that I have from way back when. If there's anything in your Google Drive, you can find it there. But this is the cool part. So I go to Google Image Search and I can begin searching for whatever background I want. So in this case, I'm going to actually look for a blue wood background. OK, and what's cool is these images are all safe for you to use. So here we go. There's a beautiful turquoise one. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to go with rainbow. Let's go with rainbow, rainbow, wood background. Let's see what we find. And there you go. You've got a beautiful colors of wood background. And I simply click on the image, single click on the image, and then that blue bar will pop up at the bottom. And I click on insert. Then I hit done and that wood, that rainbow background has now appeared in the back. So again, you can make this um, whatever you want it to look like in the background. Um, you can even change and have different backgrounds on different pages. Um, I also don't, because of that's rainbow, I don't like this black, this white, sorry, this gray background on these images. I'm gonna sync. I'm clicking on one, I've single clicked on one. I'm holding my shift key and I'm clicking on the other one. So now I have both items selected. And you'll see the toolbar has changed because I no longer have just a general slide open. I am clicking on specific items. And we have a number of tools here. One of them is the fill color. So I can click on that. Again, I can change the color. There's options for gradients. I can add a custom color if I want. Let's go with a white here. Okay. Um, I can also change the border color. So that little cup pouring is the fill color. The pencil and line is the border color. I can change the color of that if I want. So let's make that a nice bright purple. And we have, again, some more options. We have border weight, so we can make it super, super thick if we wanted to. Um, a little bit thinner, oops, wrong button. A little thinner, goes to the four. Um, I can change the border dash. If I want a solid line, dots, dashes, dots and dashes, it's entirely up to me. So those are some really cool tools that we have there. Um, another thing that people don't realize is that when you create a shape, it doesn't matter which shape you are creating. So I'm going to pull out one of these stars. Here is an eight sided star. Um, if I want it to be perfect in size, so it's it's a, even on all in each direction. If I hold the shift key and then begin to create it, it will keep nice and even. If I don't do that, this is what will happen. So, oops, let's create another one. You always have to go back to that tool to get it if you want. So here we go back. If I don't do hold that shift key, I can make it any size I want. But if I want it nice and even, then I wanna make sure I hold that shift key while I'm doing it. 
I'm just going to delete that one. Let's leave this nice clean one. Um, we'll make that a white, actually we'll make that a purple black background, pale purple, give it that dark purple border. So it really doesn't matter what shape it is. If I double click on that, you'll see my cursor now appears inside that shape and I can begin typing. So if I'm leaving a special note for my students or whatever I want to do, do this first, or if I want to number things and do a number one, number two, number three, so that they go work in the right order, um, I can type in there. Um, while that cursor is still there, I can highlight the item, the words that are there. I can change the font. Um, you will have a bunch of fonts already listed there. But if you want more fonts, if you don't like what you see, you want to see more options, you can click on that more fonts and um, an option will come pop up so that you can add more fonts to your program. So let's pick this, uh, let's see, Bubblegum Sans is always a good one for students. I can change the size, make it bigger, smaller, etc. bold, italic. Um, I can change the text color. So I'm going to make that purple. I can highlight it if I want to. Uh, and then I can do alignment um, from the left to the right, alignment to left to right, alignment top to bottom. So in this case, I want it aligned center and I'm gonna align center again here. So it shouldn't have shifted much. If I need double spacing, I can do that, bullet points, etc. And I can make this as big or as small as I want to. Okay, so if I need to shrink it down, again, I would have to change my size, my font because of the size I set it, but I can make it bigger and there we go. With this, you can also kind of make stickers and links between items. So if I click on my shape, I can then click on the insert link button. This looks like the little chain at the top. And by clicking on that, the option will pop up and I can paste a link to an outside resource or I can do it to another slide in the presentation. I will show you that again in a minute because we want to have multiple slides to do that. And it makes it easy for the student to move around the document by do, creating these buttons. And we'll show you this, the tabs in a minute. I'm just going to shift that up to the top there. One of the other really cool things is that you can insert images and sounds um, and videos into your inter, um, interactive notebook. I'm going to open up YouTube. I find it easier to do it this way. I go to YouTube and find the video I want. All right, let's see. Yeah, lots of music popping up because I like to listen to music while I'm teaching and etc. Um, so let's find a nice English, um, simple sentences. Okay, so writing simple sentences. So maybe I found my video. I open the video. So I've got my essay okay. written. I know. Grammarly pops up everywhere these days. We don't need to watch the video, though. But if I scroll down, I get the share link. I click on that share button. Now you can copy and paste the URL from what is called the Omnibar in Google Chrome, um, but it is recommended that you use this share link. So you copy it, copy, just click that button, go back to your document and you go to the insert tab and you will see insert video. Okay, now you can do a search directly of YouTube um, from here, but I find that it's not always quite as accurate as the U search engine on the YouTube page itself. So then I literally paste the URL in that box, click the search button, and look, there's the video I know I want. I single click on it and then select, click on select. If there's a video from outside of YouTube or from elsewhere on the internet, I can paste that URL here. Or if I have a video that I've already pre-recorded, you can see I've got lots of stuff here on um, my drive. I can actually insert a video that I have on my drive right there. So I'm going to click on the return to Google Drive. Let's paste that again. Search, single click, 
there we go, and hit the select button, and the video will appear right smack in the middle of my page. Now what I can do is I can grab that corner box at the bottom and I can make it smaller if I want. I can make it nice and big if I want it to fill up half the page, whatever I want, uh, however I want it to view. If I want, there we go, we're going to make that. And I'm going to click on the background, so I'm deselecting everything. I'm going to single click on that video and I am just shifting it and you see that red bar has appeared and that's telling me it's now aligned with the center of that box on the right side. So there we go. Um, I can even put a border around this video if I want. You can see those tools all appear here. There's the border color. Um, let's give it that bright purple again. I can make it give it the same size. Now let's make this just a tad smaller because it's blending in a little bit. There we go. So I'm just shifting it around so it's now centered and I have a video. What is really, really cool about this, and this works whether you're doing a presentation or you're creating an interactive notebook, is that when you place a video in Google Slides and then you play it for your students, it gets rid of all of the advertisements. So that means you can show your video in class without worrying about having to get through whatever advertisement that is there. Because you know some of them you can watch for five seconds and then skip, but some of them you just can't do that. You have to keep watching. So presenting your videos from YouTube in a slide solves that problem with your students. I strongly recommend it. If you're doing presentations in class, put the video directly in your Google Slides and you don't have to worry about those ads. So there we go. We have our inserting of images, sorry, videos. Um, again, that is under the insert toolbar. You'll see there's lots of other options there text boxes, audio, et cetera. Um, for the next one, we're gonna go to the insert an image. That image button, because it's more commonly used, appears on the toolbar. So you can click on it from here and you can see there's upload from your computer, search the web, et cetera. There's a few options. It is identical to the one that is under the insert uh, in the toolbar. So, sorry, in the tab. So there you go, the exact same things pop up. So yes, you can um, add a URL if you have the URL of an image. You can take a photo, grab it from your drive or from your photos. But again, this is the same as the background, search the web. And you can find images this way really, really easily. It takes a second, my computer internet must be slowing down a little bit. So I can search for images directly. Um, and maybe I want a koala. Okay, so I type in the word koala and I hit enter and then images will appear. Okay, now maybe um, I want, so I can just, sorry, before we go on to that, this is the koala I want. I simply click on it, click insert and the photo will appear. Again, it's gonna be nice and big and you can just shrink it down as you see fit, as you need to. Okay, so I have my koala. I can get it to the right size that I want, drag it to the position that I want. Um, you'll see that there are these boxes all around and at the very top, there is a box with a circle, a bar and a circle sticking off the top of it. And by clicking that, holding and, and dragging it, you can um, turn your image at an angle. Um, you can turn it upside down completely. So it's a nice, easy way of um, changing the orientation of your photo. Again, if I right click, I can um, do a format. I can crop the image. I can replace the image, reset the image. I can rotate it. I can flip it. I can center it on the page, et cetera, however, I, whatever I need to do. Now, maybe I do need to crop that image. If I, rather than doing the right click, there's a quick, instead of doing the right click and doing crop image, another option I have is I simply double click that image and you'll see these black lines have appeared around it and I can drag it up and down and crop my image that way as well. So I get my image, however, I, whatever shape I want. I did want to show you another thing with regard to searching the web for images. 
Um, sometimes we want an image that has a transparent background. Those are typically saved as PNGs, dot PNG. Um, but you can actually search for transparent images right here within the document. So for example, here's a pencil, okay? If I search at pencil, probably have backgrounds all up. Um, on each of them. But if I add either PNG to it or transparent to it, that allows me to find a pencil or whatever item it is. Um, I single, simply click on it again and click insert and the pencil will appear on my page. Again, it's giant, but you can see it has no background. So I can shrink it down to whatever size I want. I can rotate it move this up a little bit. So I'm going to rotate it. Here we go. Oops, too much. More. Undo. Did it more than I wanted to. There we go. And then I can drag it into position and have it overlap whatever I want. See, I can even have it overlap the video if I wanted to and go from there. Um, inserting sounds. Now, this is really, really cool because you can do recordings. Unfortunately, you can't do them directly into Google Slides. So what I do is I make voice notes on my iPhone and then I email them to myself so that I can or save them directly into my Google Drive from my phone and then I can insert them. Um, but it leaves a button and your student can hear your voice or you can even add sound effects if you really wanted to. So if we go to insert, we go to audio. Okay, so it's going to pop up my drive and anything that I have already on there is what's going to appear here to see there's a stack load of Star Wars stuff and this is from a um, escape room I created so let's let's just click on one of these I'm going to hit select. And there is it's going to create the audio it just takes a minute and you'll see it gives me an audio button right there, I can make this bigger if I want. Oops, there we go let's move that over. All right, I can make it bigger if I want to, smaller, etc. Um, I can change the format of it. When I insert this, will this format options box will automatically appear. So I can set it to play on click or play automatically. If when so the student opens that page, it automatically starts playing. Um, but that only audio playback only works when it's in presentation mode. And we'll talk about that part in a little bit on using how when, how students should use it. Um, size and rotation, position. This is the really cool part, the recolor. So let's close that box. Let's close that box so that, that we have just the recolor open. So I can choose a different color if I want it to. So let's go with that turquoise because it matches everything. Um, I can add drop shadow reflection as I need to. And then when you play it, it plays whatever you have on that mount button. It's a really, really cool tool, especially for our littlest ones um, or for students that have um, processing issues so that they are getting the instructions both visually and they're getting to hear it, especially if we're not in the classroom there with them. Um, now I showed you how to enter, create a, a box, a shape that you can type in. There is also the option for using the text box. So you can just click on that text box tool. It looks like a box with four dots on the, each corner with the big T in it. And you can create a text box that way. And you can just begin typing. Again, you have that information that appears where you can change your font, the size. You can even put a border and fill color on um, in that text box as well. Although I do find that if I want a box that is colored and has a border that has text in it, I find it much, much better to use a shape as opposed to the text box for this particular function. So that's some of the basics of tools that we want to use um, that um, many of you are probably familiar with. Um, let's click on that and I'm going to delete it. Um, a couple of other tools that I want to show you in Google Slides. I'm going to close that sidebar open for, for that was open for a minute. Um, the first is that we have the undo and redo tool. 
Um, this is the arrow pointing backwards, bouncing backwards, and the arrow bouncing forwards. And um, if I click the undo button, that text box has reappeared. Um, if I do the redo, it's going to disappear because that was the last function that I did. And that undo button goes back a, a fair way. So you can go back and undo a few things if you're really not happy with what you've done. Um, another thing that you want to be able to do is um, add additional slides. So you can just create, hit the plus button and it automatically creates a new slide, but it's going to have all the bits and stuff on it. Um, I don't particularly like that because I am creating my own presentation with the notebook. So um, I'm going to delete that slide there for a moment. Um, if you want each page to look completely different, you would click on that little arrow next to the plus and go to the blank. Or if you're just duplicating a basic page and you want to use it multiple times, this all the sli um, slides in your presentation, all the pages in your interactive notebook appear on that left column. So if I single click on that slide and then right click on my mouse, I can duplicate that slide. And you're going to see that slide is absolutely identical to the one, the first one. So the first and second slides are all identical. So that may be an easy way for you to create um, do multiples of a slide, um, especially if there's a format, you've got a format set up um, that you really, really want to do. Something else that you can do, and this is super, super handy with our students especially, is at the very bottom on the right side, there is what looks like a map key. Um, it's kind of like a box with um, a pin in it and a star in the middle of it. So if you hover over that, it appears as explore. And this is a super cool tool for our students, especially when we want them to be interacting with our notebook. It allows us to search the web. So again, we'll look up Koala because I love koalas. So I'm going to hit type in koala, hit enter. And it does an internet search for me. OK, if I go to images, go come on wake up computer there we go um, I can click on the plus that appears over it so maybe this is the image I want I click on that it appears it's going to appear in my slide but what is really really cool and this helps us with teaching our students about digital literacy and plagiarism is that it carries over with it the link to where the photo originally came from. As you can see, this is a free photo. It's from Wikipedia. Photos on Wikipedia are generally free. So that your students are learning that about ownership of um, ideas and, and copyright and plagiarism. So it's a really, really cool tool. It also makes it very easy for them to do research because they can go and do research. This function actually also appears in Google Docs as well. So student and help, there's even the addition of a creating citations tool in Google Docs. So there we go. I'm going to close that. Um, if at any time you are looking for this one of these pop up windows so that you can adjust something, um, if you click on that item, so maybe you want to add animation, etc. You want to add shadow. Click single click on the item and then right click, and then you will see that format options. And that for whatever it is that you need to format will appear there. Okay, that pops up. Um, we'll do that with the video as well. Single clicking on the video, I'm right clicking and I'm going to um, format options. Again, it's got that little paintbrush there. And there we go, we can make changes. Um, something I did forget to mention is that you can set the video to start and end at a specific time. So maybe you only want to watch part of a video, you can set the time and the start and end times of the video. So the students only are watching the portion of the video that you want them to see. Now, it, the last thing I wanted to show you in this section is that sometimes there are items that we don't want our students to be able to click on. So I'm going to go back to this first um, um, slide in because remember we have the duplicates. I'm going to delete this item. 
I'm going to, de uh, so deleting that, I'm going to delete the photo, the, the koala, uh, photo of the koala, I'm going to delete the video. And so maybe this is what I want it to look like. I want all my pages to look like this. All right, let's fix that. And I'm going to take this, this copy out of it. So there we go, we have the blank. So I have a blank background. And we know, especially with our little kids, if they click on something, they're going to easily move things around, etc. So an easy way to set up a background of a page, this is the things that you don't want your students to interact with, is that you create the page and then go to file. And then you're going to go to make a copy. Or sorry, not make a copy, you're going to go to download. Okay, so you want to make sure you're on the specific slide that you want. You're going to go to file and make a da um, download and you're going to go to JPEG. And what this do, uh, click on that and I will save to my desktop. Okay, and unfortunately, I'm going to change, see if I can change my share. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a second so you can see my entire screen. Share, share desktop, there we go. So you see my entire desktop now. You can see my, um, my folder for my computer has saved there, is popped up on the screen. So test background, I'm just gonna make this call, call this test background. Okay, so I'm gonna click on save and it's now saved in my folder. You can see it's popped up on the bottom, test background. If uh, rather than double clicking on that, if I click on that arrow next to it, I can pop it open, show in Finder. And the folder that it is in on my computer will pop up right there. Now what I'm gonna do is actually, I am going to completely delete everything on this page. And so if I'm on the page and I do Command A, I select everything on it. So the, I'm gonna delete, and then I hit delete. I'm gonna delete everything on it except for that background, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to the background, select background, and I am going to go to choose image, and I'm gonna to go to upload. Okay, so there we go. I can hit the browse button if I wanted to, and you see that document, the file from the folder from my computer pops open, cancel. Or I can literally drag and drop it from my computer desktop. So literally dragging and dropping, hit done. And now no matter what I do on this page, my students cannot move anything on it. And so that saves me a lot of trouble and frustration in our kids, especially our little ones, that they can't move things on a page that we don't want them to move to. So this is the end of our first segment. I want you to take a few minutes and start building your own uh, Google document. You'll see there is a space um, at the bottom where you can um, submit. Um, simply go to drive.google.com and you can then go and open a new Google slide. Or if you go to slides.google.com, you can then open up directly in slides and select a blank um, Google slide document for you to begin working on. All right, we'll see you again in a few minutes.